Hello, this is Joe at Sierra Specialty Automotive. Welcome to the shop. This is going to be the first in a series of videos that I was going to call Fixing Stuff, but I looked on YouTube and there's a whole lot of people calling their videos Fixing Stuff. So I'm going to try for something slightly different. I'm going to call this playlist what's broken now and what's broken now is the circulating pump on our hot tub uh, we have a hot springs uh, spa that has a motor that runs 24 7 circulating water uh, through the filter uh, system and through the, the main uh, through the heater and that motor that the motor on that circulating pump is noisy it's developed a quite a uh, an audible hum that we can hear e even uh, while we're in the hot tub it, it uh, is loud enough to be audible uh, so <clears throat> I have <clears throat> I have purchased a new uh, pump uh, it's a different brand of course the one in the uh, spa now has a, a hot springs label on it, uh, probably manufactured for them. Uh, the one I bought is a Grundfos, which is a standard uh, name brand uh, pump. And this video is going to be uh, a, a record of uh, removing the old pump <coughs> and installing the new pump. I'm hoping it'll go smoothly and quickly, but I'm sure there'll be some kind of a hiccup or a hang-up uh, that uh, requires some kind of solution other than just plug and play. So we'll see what happens. Let's uh, take the camera outside and and take a look at the at the hot tub and the pump. <coughs> If any of these hoses will come loose. Now let's get some more tools. If not, I'm just going to cut it off because I have to reroute this hose anyway and I'll shorten it in the process. I'll route it in a shorter direction. Old stuff. No UV exposure in here, but it sure has taken a, a hard set. This stuff is very dry. It's almost brittle. Not quite, but it's close. I'm concerned that I won't be able to get these off intact. I may have to replace this hose and this hose assembly here over to the to the uh, water heater. We'll see. This is a bleeder hose running into the filter compartment. For some reason it was run up 
over one of these big ducks up here. So I can, I have plenty, uh, plenty of room to reroute this, assuming I can get it to go back onto the barb. There's another junction up under here. I'm hoping I don't have to dig into that because that'll be a huge pain if I do. This new pump uh, hard, hard wires right at the at the pump. <clears throat> I'm just going to go ahead and cut this cord off of the old pump, and we'll bring that into the bottom of the new pump. All the power, of course, is shut off on this. Got it to break loose. Now, if it'll come off the barbs. Aha! Much easier than I expected. I've loosened the screws. I think I'm going to go ahead and take them out. I don't think I'll be able to use the same screw locations for the other pump. Seems like every hose on the machine is converging right through here. Well, the other, the other end with the clamp still on it broke loose. Let's see if I can get this end to loosen up. There. All right. Maybe. Ah. Again, much easier than I thought. This. This pump does not have the, the typical barbs. It has just a, a small flange, a small raised edge. All right, there's always some kind of a hitch. This pump with the, with the barbs that's a uh, much more aggressive uh, holding uh, mechanism. That, uh, they, uh, the uh, hot tub supply company sent me the wrong pump. This is one inch and I should have had three quarter inch. I think I may see if I can get a piece of tube that will go over the outside of this original tubing, looks like it will be about the right size. If, if I get it, it will be about the right size to go over these barbs. So let's go do some shopping. All right, let's see if we can get back on track here. I was hoping to find some uh, clear plastic tube one inch ID biggest I could find in our little town was uh, three quarter ID so I got some heater hose from the from Napa and that's a 
reasonably good fit. This is one inch heater hose on one inch fittings. Uh, I'm going to to uh, cut back just a little bit on this tubing here. It's flared a bit right at the end and it's too long anyway. Uh, it did go all the way, the fitting went all the way up uh, up into here and I'm going to bring this against the new fitting so this is uh, three-fourths of an inch too long and this one is as well I have tubing cutters I don't want to use them on this stuff because it is too hard I'm, I'm afraid it would uh, break I think it's I think I can work with it if I don't crush it uh, but if I do crush it, I think it'll be, it'll uh, crack and, and uh, I'd have to replace the whole piece. Alright, there's one cut. Let's see if we can get anywhere close on this. Uh, all right, I think that'll be about right. I may need to use a slightly longer piece here after I cut that off, but I believe I believe we're going to be in good enough shape there. I'm going to go ahead and cut this one off. my fingers attached. That's a fairly sharp knife and this stuff is tough. It would help if I was right-handed but I think I'm getting it. of this about at the limit of my cutter here I see wet that with the water dripping out I should be able to slide that all the way on and then slide it back when the time comes It's going to be in my way. I'll just leave that in there for future reference in case this pump ever gets replaced again with the correct size. I can go back to it. piece here about oh, in fact about two inches ought to be enough I don't need to do my wiring
I need to get a spade lug for that ground. There's a spade lug. It would be nice to have weatherproof fitting here, but it's on the bottom. And even though this is in a hot tub, it, it uh, has never given any indication of being wet in here. So I don't think I'm going to concern myself too much. Uh, I don't have the right hardware and don't even know if I'd be able to get it here in Quincy. Trying to get that ground wire headed in the right direction around this little corner in here. There it is. That takes a well. It's a multi multi fit screw, but it torques twenty. Is the obviously the uh, preferred tool. be good for the cable clamp. I'll go ahead and cinch that up. Now the wires are not color coded so there's no preference for neutral or hot. I'm going to take just a bit off of these tinned ends. They're a wee bit long for my taste. And I'm going to use these closed butt connectors to make this joint. Again, corrosion has not appeared to be an issue in here with the wiring. There are, there is a corrosion issue with the plumbing, or at least with the uh, uh, trombone water heater. I can see I'm going to have to replace that before too long. And the heater itself is corroding. See if I can get this. Well, let's see. Let's put the cover back on the electrical connections. Oh, 
I'm going to step over and flip them. No. Yeah, I'm going to step over and flip the 20 amp breaker for the controls and the the uh, circulating pump. This pump circulates 24-7 uh, on this hot tub. Uh, so just putting the 20 amps to it uh, should run the pump and I believe I'll be able to hear it from the circuit breaker position on the wall. Uh, the, the main pump and the trombone heater run on the 30 amp breaker which I will not turn on. I heard it run. I hope I hope it doesn't squeal like that after it's full of water. I imagine it depends on water to lubricate the seal. That's why I ran it for only a, a half a second or so. So this is going to work, but barely. I teased the guy at the auto parts store about the size of these clamps he was selling me. Asked if he was trying to get every penny out of me he could. He said the next size smaller just didn't quite go over the hose. And he was concerned I wouldn't be able to uh, get it fitted up. Be a good seal. And that will too. This is a torque wrench for 5 sixteenths uh, nuts on the hose clamps. It uh, automatically releases at the uh, appropriate, uh, yeah, there we go, at the appropriate torque setting. Let's see if there's a name on this. This is made by 
Joe Line Tools Incorporated, J O L I N E, and it is a Jyoti, J O T E torque wrench. So we'll use this to do the final tightening. I don't know if you can hear it snap when it releases. There. Now I'll take a little bit off of this hose. Better find my clamp for it. Get that back on there. This is not going to want to play nicely with the with the uh, cover. It sticks out quite a bit. Get a little spit on there. is very stiff. I'm going to move this clamp up before I cut myself on it. I'm going to try warming the end of that hose up with a heat gun. It is just so stiff, it does not want to clear the nipple again. set in under this pump and let it set on uh, some kind of support. Here's a, here's a piece of cedar with a bevel cut to it. I can slide that under the pump and it'll set at that angle and should work pretty well. Let's get a closer view of that.
um, take this uh, after I take the camera off the tripod I'll bring it in for a closer view of that tapered shim. Uh, that has the installation of the pump completed. I'm going to shut the camera off now. I'll do some uh, cleanup. I'm going to leave this all open until I get the water up above the uh, intake level for this pump. Uh, and then I'll turn it on and uh, we'll watch that to, for a few minutes of operation. Number one, to make sure that the pump uh, does not uh, squeal when it's lubricated and uh, number two to make sure there are no leaks. All right, the pump's been running for about five minutes, I suppose. Uh, the water got up in the filter compartment to the level uh, from which the pump draws. So at that time, I'm able to turn on the 24-7 uh, circulating system. Here's, I think, a better shot of that tapered uh, shim I put under the foot just to support the weight. Uh, it, it doesn't vibrate. It doesn't make any noise either other than a, a barely detectable hum. Uh, just enough that you can identify it as a running motor, but uh, very, very quiet. And it did not squeal even on startup. So that's good. And I see no leaks anywhere. I did have a leak at the beginning. Right. Right here. There's a plug. That I would imagine is intended. Uh, for connection to this. Breather line. Uh, which. In this hot tub is connected on a special elbow. So that plug was loose. It was dripping. I took that out, put a couple of turns of uh, Teflon tape and uh, put that back in. Uh, probably a couple of turns past finger tight and that is holding. That bleeder line comes up here into the filter compartment. I don't know if I'd be able to get a picture of this. That it puts out that stream of water uh, right there. Uh, uh, returning flow. Well, I'm not sure exactly what that's for, but it's hooked up and it's working just as it always has, uh, discharging into the filter compartment. So we'll call this job done. That's a successful installation retrofit of a different pump to replace the original failed noisy pump and even though there was an issue with the fitting size uh, we were able to overcome that with about five dollars worth of hardware from the auto parts store and we're back in business it's a little after eleven o'clock uh, in, the, in the morning and I expect that this heater should have the water up to a comfortable temperature, 101 degrees in the evening uh, be before we come out here around 9.30 or 10 o'clock every night we come out to the hot tub for 15 or 20 minutes and it should be fully warmed up uh, well before that. So we'll be back in business. While I'm in here I'm looking at a couple of other things. This trombone heater was replaced uh, maybe five years ago. How close can I get? I don't know if I can make that focus on that corrosion. Right there is some corrosion. There's no leaking. And right here is some corrosion around the, uh, the, the main housing at the, at the business end where the electricity hooks up. So I think probably I want to uh, get one of those on order and have it on hand because that would appear to be an impending failure. Well, all right. This will conclude the first episode of What's Broken Now. 
there's always something breaking around here. It's a typical house full of typical people. So there will be ample opportunity in the future for me to add to this and whatever the circumstances are conducive to filming a repair, I will do so and add them to this playlist. In the meantime, thank you for watching. I hope you'll comment. I hope you'll subscribe. Till next time.